okay so in today's lecture we will focus on the new uh, area which are the lubricants and their properties so as you know tribology heavily depends on lubricants and here mainly we will talk about liquid lubricants not solid lubricants uh, because liquid lubricants are the major uh, part of many of the tribological systems uh, whether you talk about gears or engines almost all everywhere we have to use lubricants because simply without lubricants friction cannot be controlled and there are some important properties of lubricants that they are required to possess first is viscosity so as we know um, many theories uh, and the one by Reynolds theory uh, heavily depends on viscosity that means if the viscosity of the lubricant is not enough it cannot provide lubrication properties the viscosity is not enough because the lubricant must also have other properties and another one is lubricity or we can simply say low friction properties so that means the lubricant must have its inherent low friction property and that we can see that some types of lubricants or liquids have low friction for example if you touch them with fingers you will feel that it has got low friction there are some other types of uh, liquids which do not provide low friction even though it may have the right kind of viscosity another important property is the boundary lubrication property by boundary lubrication we mean that when the speed is low and load is very very high in that kind of situation the lubricant film cannot form the hydrodynamic lubricant film cannot form and therefore the solids may touch each other and wear will initiate so to avoid this situation we add boundary lubricants so boundary lubricants basically form a layer on the two mating surfaces and here basically we talk about steel because most of our engineering systems deal with steel so they will make some reaction with the steel surface they will form a layer which is known as boundary layer and this boundary layer will basically protect the steel part or the substrate so this is the mechanism how the boundary lubricants work so these three important properties and there are many other properties which are also important for the lubricant so viscosity the lubricity or low friction property and the boundary lubrication properties so these are the um, properties uh, required of lubricants so here let us talk about the types of liquid lubricants what kind of lubric liquid lubricants we have the very first one is natural oils the natural oils are the uh, vegetable oils and uh, basically vegetable oils and animal fats so uh, traditionally for um, many many thousands of years human have used these natural oils as lubricating material so animal fats and vegetable oils so for example in very very ancient time people used uh, things like uh, uh, chariots or the wheel wheel carts uh, as well as uh, for example potters potters use a wheel called potter wheel so these were rotating um, <clears throat> machines as well as wind windmills windmills have been used for quite uh, some time so these machines used different types of natural oils animal fats or vegetable oils so they were the main um, lubricants available to us in those times mineral oils were not available the these mineral oils and synthetic oils so we had to depend on natural oils and it served the purpose because the machines of those times did not run at very high speed or at very high load even though some application like we can say chariot uh, application will require very high speed as well as very high load so the main problem with natural oils was that they were very unstable in oxidative environment and oxidative environment means 
wherever oxygen is present so even normal air is also oxidative because oxygen is present so they were not stable and therefore they will get oxidized as well as at high thermal uh, condition temperature if temperature increases or yeah basically thermal environment so it's like um, you know we have uh, vegetable oils we use vegetable oils and if you heat it little bit too much you know when you use vegetable oils for frying something and after frying because during frying the temperature can go very high the oil will almost boil and then you will see that this oil doesn't behave as as before it's oxidized its viscosity will change viscosity will increase and it doesn't have the lubricating properties anymore so this is what happens at high temperature obviously we had to move away from uh, natural oils to other forms of lubrication and fortunately um, in uh, mid 19th century uh, petroleum oil was uh, discovered and petroleum oil which comes from mines um, because petro petroleum products uh, or petroleum is obtained from uh, oil well so which is like mine and that's why the name comes mineral it comes from mine so through the mining industry the mineral oils were obtained from petroleum and after processing of the petroleum which is called fractionation process so through this fractionation process you can separate them into types of different viscosity and different chemical nature so for very low viscosity you know you can use them as a fuel higher viscosity you can use them as lubricants so this is how the fractionation process works and we obtain paraffins and naphthenes and aromatic or mixed aromatic uh, compounds which are used as mineral oils so basically mineral oils contain paraffins and naphthenes and some aromatic or mixed aromatic and aliphatic hydrocarbons so among all paraffins are most preferred because they give the best um, lubrication properties others should not be um, in large proportion otherwise the oil will not work um, as a good lubricating oil they also contain what is known as asphaltenes the word asphaltenes comes from asphalt as you know one mineral is known as asphalt so these are basically impurities and they contain sulfur oxygen phosphorus nitrogen and even some metal oxides or different type of metal compounds so these are considered as impurities but the mineral oils which come from uh, petroleum the natural uh, product uh, it does contain these impurities so in order for us to make the lubricating oil very good we have to remove these impurities mineral oils generally have low viscosity index viscosity index is a term or property which indicates the uh, dependence of oil on its viscosity at different temperatures so how how much the viscosity changes by a change in temperature so if viscosity index is high that is preferred that means this oil viscosity will not change so much with temperature so it is uh, preferred so generally mineral oils will have viscosity index of 120 or less that means less means it is more prone to change in viscosity with temperature pore point in the range of minus 6 to minus 60 degree celsius but generally minus 20 degree celsius so pore point is another property which is required of lubricant because pore point tells us that what is the lowest temperature at which the lubricant is still fluid still in the fluid state 
So the lower the pore point, the better. It, that means the liquid is still flowing even at very, very low temperature. So for applications like in, in winter, in cold countries, the temperature can go up to minus 40 degrees Celsius or below, definitely below minus 20 degrees Celsius. So at these temperatures, the liquid lubricants will not remain liquid, they will become solid. And if they become solid, obviously they cannot do the function of lubricant. So therefore, pore point is very, very important and we want pore point as low as possible low flash point so flash point is uh, the point and the temperature the lowest temperature at which the uh, liquid will catch fire if given an ignition higher flash point is preferred so this mineral oil has got low flash point because that means this oil can catch fire even at lower temperature may provide sludge and varnish so these are um, the impurities and oxidation products that will form sludge and varnish. So this will basically increase the viscosity of the liquid and, um, the, <clears throat> and the biggest problem is that they will deposit at different parts of the machine. It, that's for, therefore it is not required. So, Hello sir. Yeah. Sir, I have a question last sir. Yeah. Sir, in, in mineral oils, Over point in the range of minus 6 to 60 degrees Celsius, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir, but uh, in our country, generally the room temperature is uh, 20 degrees Celsius to 25 degrees Celsius. Yeah. So, sir, how it works, sir, in mineral work, in application way, uh, where we want to use this? Okay. So, <clears throat> pore point tells me, tells us the temperature, lowest temperature, at which the liquid is still fluid, is still we can pour it. You know? So there are some experiments, uh, standard experiments, but basically what it means is we can pour it. So that means it is flowing. So ideally we want low pour point so that, uh, that the fluid will be, uh, um, or the liquid will be in fluid state even at low temperature. So the lowest, the lower the pour point, the better. So at, in our country, even in winter, the temperature may not go, um, you know, can hardly go like three degree or four degrees Celsius. Or in the daytime, it is at least six or seven degrees Celsius, right? So if the pore point is minus 20, that means this will be flowing at six degrees Celsius. So it is okay that liquid can, the lubricant can work at six degrees Celsius, right? So the problem is in, in uh, colder countries, in the northern countries you know, like Canada and other parts of the world where the temperature can go very very low okay so at this low temperature the liquid will will um, freeze they will become solid so you want to uh, drive a car but you cannot drive because the, the lubricants have uh, got frozen friction is very very high and if you still run the car then what will happen is wear will be too much and the car will not function or the life of the car will be reduced. So therefore, uh, lower pore point is better. Is that the answer? Yes, sir. Okay. So next is uh, synthetic oils. As the name suggests, synthetic means it has been made. It is not obtained naturally. So we can take the natural raw materials and we basically conduct some reaction some chemical process and we create these kind of hydrocarbons produced by polymerization process so in the lab we will conduct this polymerization process and there are some very well known for example poly alpha olefins or also known as pao then organic esters polyglycols silicon fluid also is a very um, well known synthetic oil so these were created basically to overcome the problems faced by mineral oils. Problems such as low viscosity index, um, high pore point, low flash point. 
So these were solved by making synthetic oil in this way. And one of the important advantage of synthetic oil is no impurities because it has been made by a chemical process. So we do not have impurities. The impurities like asphaltines, which are present in mineral oils because they are natural, naturally obtained, uh, which are not there. So therefore the oil is better. High viscosity index, so greater than 120. So this number 120 is, is, a, um, is a number which we can discuss later about viscosity index, but right now we can understand that 120, more than 120 is required. Poor point in the range of minus 18 to minus 74 degrees Celsius, but generally minus 30 to minus 50. So this is lower than the poor point of mineral oils. And that means this oil will be fluid even at minus 30 or minus 20 degrees Celsius. Higher flash point for to non-flammable. So some of the synthetic oils are non-flammable, which is good because we do not want um, oil to catch fire. So for example, in um, aircraft application, we want oil, the lubricating oils should be non-flammable as much as possible because uh, the airplanes already contains very highly flammable uh, fuels and there are many parts which can have high temperature, can go high temperature and therefore we want all the lubricating oils should be non-flammable. So in the aircraft industry this is uh, very very important as well as in other, other industry generally free of sludge and varnish. So that means these deposits will not occur in the machine. So your machine like engine will remain clean if you use synthetic oils. So this is the reason why synthetic oils are used and also, but the one problem is they are costly. So they can be about three times the price of mineral oils, three to four times, but at a higher cost, we get better performance. So if you look at uh, lubricating oils, uh, it has got two very important components. One is called the base oil, which is the mineral oil or the synthetic oils. And the other part is additives, which we will talk soon. So additives are added to enhance the lubricating properties or other properties of the lubricants. But there is a base oil. Base oil is the, as it says, it's the base oil. That means that is the largest volume of this lubricating oil. So the base oils have been divided into these groups, one, two, three, four, and five. So these are industry standard. So you will see these numbers even in the industry. So group one is solvent refined mineral oil. Of course, the mineral oil has to be refined, but it has got um, less than 90 saturates. So saturates are important because the saturated uh, molecules will not oxidize so easily. So it has got less than 90% saturates. Aromatic percentage is high. So this is also not uh, a desirable thing because aromatic components will produce uh, deposits and sludge and so on. Sulfur is also high. Sulfur is another thing which is not desired in lubricating oil because <clears throat> it may have some other effects like oxidation and corrosion. And viscosity index is 80 to 120, generally less than 120. So this group one is not very helpful for most of the industrial applications. So therefore, other two, number two and number three are better and as you can say that, that it has got better, but hydrocracked has got viscosity index of more than 120. So this is very desirable. So basically uh, these processes are conducted to make the molecules more saturated. So hydrogen is added to saturate the bonds. So as you know, for example, carbon may have two bonds. So that means this bond is not saturated. So if we can add hydrogen, so we can remove this one bond here. 
So this is how the unsaturated bonds are uh, converted into saturated bonds by treating them with hydrogen. So all the properties have improved and this viscosity index is more than 120. So many of the uh, base oil, the mineral base oil will be group 3. Group 4 is for synthetic PAO and other synthetic hydrocarbons. So it has got uh, saturates 100%. So no unsaturated molecules, aromatic is 0, sulfur is 0 and viscosity index is more than 120, nearly 150. And some other synthetic oils may be called as group 5. So generally we work with group 3 for mineral oils and group 4 for synthetic oils. So this is how in the industry the base oils are separated and basically they reflect their cost. Now the molecules of mineral oils uh, one is paraffin. So as I said paraffins are most preferred and among the paraffins the branched paraffins are most preferred molecules. So the viscosity depends on the, um, the molecular weight. So molecular weight of 250 for low viscosity oil, 2000 for high viscosity oils. So for a given molecular size, paraffins have relatively low viscosity, low density and higher freezing point. So, Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Sir, uh, the oil lubricating oil, hmm. which we use in our bikes, ir irrigation machine, etc. Right. Are there paraffins, sir? No? Yes, they are supposed to be mineral base oil. And since if you are using in uh, agriculture, so we do not use uh, so much of um, uh, additives. Basically, additives make the oil very toxic. So if you use normal paraffin oil, which are the mineral oils, so they, they, they will be fine. So you are talking about agricultural equipment, right? Yes, sir. Hmm. So um, soon we will talk about the additives and you will see that additives will make the lubricant better in terms of performance, but it will make the lubricant very toxic. So if those look kinds of lubricants drop on the soil, the soil will also become toxic so yeah so paraffin uh, oil is basically the mineral oil so branched one is preferred so it is a process of refinement during the refinement actually uh, paraffin percentage is increased naphthene percentage is decreased because paraffins does better similarly aromatic percentage should be re reduced decreased so it's so all a matter of uh, refining and as well as hydrogen treatment. So for example, it has got unsaturated bonds. So these unsaturated bonds should be converted into saturated. So, so the more refining you do, the more treatment you do, the more expensive it becomes. The straight chain paraffins are wax. They, they, they have waxing property. So basically they form kind of solid. So that's the reason why straight chains are not preferred. Branch chain is in the liquid form, whereas this is in the solid form. So there is a process called de-waxing or converting straight chain paraffins to branch chain paraffins. So again, it involves some processing to convert straight chain paraffins to branch chain paraffins. So now, so far we have discussed about um, the base oils and now about additives so a lubricant may contain as high as 30 percent by volume of the additives so that means this much of additives are added in addition to the base oil to improve its properties so very first one is anti-wear additives so anti-wear additives are basically used to reduce the wear and the wear can be reduced by the boundary lubrication property. So these molecules are basically have boundary lubrication property that means it will react with the steel surface and whenever there is a wear 
fresh steel surface is exposed and because of high pressure and high temperature these molecules will react with the steel surface and form bondy lubricants so for example if this is the fresh steel surface so these molecules will will react and there is a complex reaction chemical reaction it will form a reaction and therefore it will cover the fresh steel surface so therefore this steel surface will be protected so there are many different types of uh, molecules which have very strong uh, boundary lubrication property so even a normal oil vegetable oils you will see that it has some boundary lubrication property because if it um, if you put it on some surface it will stick to the surface it will form a very very strong layer but that layer is not strong enough but in this case they form chemical reaction so steric acid thiol stearate but the most important are tcp and zddp in fact zddp is uh, the most common zinc diethyl diethyophosphate so zddp is used in almost all lubricants to enhance the anti wear property tcp is used uh, for high temperature application but this is also another important they are very expensive but they cannot be um, they uh, the lubricant must have those uh, anti wear additives in order to function as lubricant industrial lubricant another is extreme pressure agents so there are some other kinds of molecules uh, sulfurized fatty acids um, then chlorinated paraffin wax they are added as extreme pressure so when the pressure is even higher for example in the case of gear application cutting operations so in these kind of operations the pressure is extremely high and lot of sliding takes place so in this kind of situation uh, extreme pressure agent is used the next is oxidation inhibitor so as i said oxidation is the process by which lubricant will degrade so all lubricant will degrade as i showed you in uh, previously uh, how a fresh engine oil uh, and how a used engine oil looks so e used engine oil looks very very blackish and this is all oxidation products so the most resistant are paraffins and least resistant are unsaturated um, molecules and so basically we want more paraffins because it is oxidation resistant but still even the paraffins will also oxidize so therefore we need to add some antioxidants and these uh, even zddp this is zddp zddp also works as antioxidants so these kind of molecules amines organic phosphides organometallics these are added into the lubricant to make it oxidation inhibitor or oxidation resistant so some application will have very very high temperature like uh, engine application turbine applications and while other application may have a very high stress and speed and which will lead to frictional heating so temperature will will rise so oxidation resistance is very very important for lubricants another factor is rust or corrosion inhibitors so uh, the oxidation products form many kind of aldehydes and acids so these oxidation products tend to be very corrosive especially for steel and for other other metals so that means after the oxidation the corrosion process will start and it will corrode your uh, machine so you must add some corrosion inhibitor in fact uh, as i said zddp also works as to some extent corrosion inhibitor but you need to have more stronger corrosion inhibitor so that you can protect the metal surfaces so these are the uh the additives which will be added as corrosion and rust in inhibitor to protect the steel surface or metallic surfaces from corrosion because of various oxidation uh, products 
So without corrosion inhibitor, uh, it will not be um, advisable to use these lubricants at very high pressure and high temperature applications. Okay, so there are more additives. Uh, we will talk about them in the next uh, class. So finally, I would like to summarize. There are mainly three types of liquid lubricants. The natural lubricants, the mineral oil lubricants, and the synthetic oils. To be a good lubricant, it should have very high viscosity and also it should have high viscosity index greater than 120. It should have low pore point and it should have high flash point. Also, the lubricant should not create sludge or varnish deposits in the engine or any parts of the machine. It should have high oxidation resistance as well as high corrosion resistance. In addition to the base oil, a lubricating oil contains additives and the volume percentage of additives may be as high as 30%. Two important additives for anti-wear and high pressure or extreme pressure application are ZDDP and TCP. So thanks for watching this video and I, I hope you learned something new. Please do not forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel. Thank you.